What's going on, everybody, and welcome back to Bourbon of the Week. My name's Chris. I'm going to be your host for today, and happy Merry Christmas week, everybody out there. I appreciate you guys being here on this channel, especially this week. And for this week, we have something special for you. As you may or may not know, every year we like to do a Booker's Batch around this time of the year. I'll tell you why in a little bit, but this is 2022-04. This is called Pinky's Batch. We're going to get to that as well, but everybody knows before we get started on all of that, time for the traditional sip. Merry Christmas, y'all. That's Booker's. I moved the bottle over here because I feel like I need more room on my drinking hand. But listen, we do this bottle around this time every year for the simple reason that this actually used to be given away as a gift. You have to be close to the family or a friend of the family to get this bottle. This is coming out of Jim Beam, so we know it's 77% corn, 13% rye, 10% malted barley. And it wasn't until a while later that somebody was like, this is actually really good whiskey. Why don't we make this and sell it to the public? We want them to have an opportunity to drink it too. And I'm glad that they did because now I can get my hands on it. But I will say this, I also only do it this time of the year because I only like to buy one bottle a year. Usually it'll be 03 or 04 because these do run $100 and I can't afford all four batches. The other thing I love about this bottle is it comes in a beautiful box, which I bet it should for the price tag that comes along with it, as well as one of these notes cards that comes with it and tells you everything you need to know. The cool thing about this particular one is it tells you the exact breakdown of the four different whiskeys that are on here. I won't read it to you, but I will put it on the screen for you so you can see exactly what we're working with. But let's get into it. We start with drinkability. Let's try it. I'll tell you what, every year somebody seems to put out a higher proof whiskey, right? Last year we had Jack Daniels Coy Hill. This year they're coming out with the small batch versions of it. We have Elijah Craig barrel proof. We have Larceny barrel proofs. We have all kinds of barrel proofs. This one right here being uncut, unfiltered, and I have yet to find one that sips quite as easy as this when it comes to the proof on it. Now there are definitely bottles that are close and maybe some that even beat this, but as far as consistency goes in the Booker's lineup, this is the third bottle that I personally bought. I think I've tried five or six and at the end of the day, I literally do not know another bottle lineup that consistently hits that mark when it comes to drinkability. 122.4 proof. We're going to give this a pretty damn good score. You know, I mean, we have to put it in the nines. We're teetering on that 9.5 mark as well. I'm going to go right over 9.5. 9.51 for 122 proof whiskey. This is the, I opened this tonight. I had a glass of it before this review, and this is my second glass. So maybe that's helped when it comes to the ethanol kick, but it's still quote unquote the neck pour. It's the first couple of sips here. Absolutely fantastic when it comes to drinkability. 9.51 is where we're going to put it. If I didn't have things to do early tomorrow morning, I would break out my other two Booker's bottles here and try these side by side. And we'll do that in a video one day because it's very intriguing to me that maybe you can tell the difference if you're trying them side by side by side. But when I drink this, I just think Booker's. I think that peanut, I think that extra sweet vanilla, a little bit of oak on the end with that six year age statement. It just seems to be typical Booker's to me. And again, I'm sure it varies batch by batch when you try them side by side. But for me, it literally just goes straight to Booker's and there's not much else that I pick up. Now here's the caveat. I personally love the flavor profile that Booker's puts out. I love the Jim Beam nuttiness. I love the sweetness that comes along with this. No ethanol kick on this at all when it comes to 122 proof. So I'm not mad about the flavor profile. And I don't know if I hate the fact that it's a consistent flavor profile. Does that make me mad? Like I'm trying buying the same bottle for $100 each year? Or does that make me happy because the drinkability and the flavor is always something that I enjoy? It's kind of weird. Like I definitely want to try something new, experience something new. But at the end of the day, because I love it, why not just keep putting it out like this and let me enjoy it? But as far as those flavor profiles, that's what you're going to get. That vanilla on the front, that nuttiness right there in the middle, a little bit of spice on the end, maybe that black pepper, a little bit of that rye spice coming out. Not a lot of oak on the very tail end of this. Doesn't dry your mouth out, which I don't enjoy when it comes to a whiskey. None of that real tobacco or leather because it's only that six to seven year mark when it comes to these bookers normally. It's just absolutely a fantastic pour. If you ask me, it seems like people either love Jim Beam or they hate Jim Beam. And this seems to be like quintessential Jim Beam product. So for me personally, love Loving that Jim Beam, loving that nuttiness, that flavor profile that comes along with the Booker's. I'm going to give this a really good score when it comes to taste as well. Let's put it like high eights though. Let's go like 8.79 when it comes to taste on this. And last but certainly not least, you know we got to do it. Let's talk about price on this bottle and we've said it before. This is a $100 bottle of bourbon. Now, they put out four of these a year and I would love to be the guy that sits down at the end of the year and puts all four of them up against each other and tells you which one's best. But I cannot justify spending $400 a year simply on the Booker's lineup. That being said, I want to talk to you, Jim Beam, and for everybody else, you can skip this part of the video. 
This is simply for the Jim Beam Distillery. What you're going to do, and if you want to put the Bourbon of the Week tag on this, you let me know. We can collab on this. At the end of 2022, you're going to save a bunch of these bottles or a bunch of these batches. What you're going to do at the beginning of 2023, when you release your first bottle and everybody forgot all about the 2022 releases, is you're going to put out a sampler kit with all four bourbons from the previous year. Going to be five ounce or a little 10 ounce sampler kit. Get your name on there. Get your logo. Put Bourbon of the Week in the corner. And that's the way that you market something because I guarantee you, Everybody would love to try all four of these and they're just not buying all four. Listen, that idea is patented by me. So make sure if you come to me, I want some royalties. All right, put my name on it. Give me some royalties. We'll be all cool from there. But at $100 for this bottle, I don't hate it because I love the bottle, but it also used to be like 70 in 2017, 80 in 2019, right? Every year it seems to go up five, 10 bucks. Last year, I believe it was $100 as well. So I don't think it went up this year. So I'm not too mad. I'm still going to give it like, it's got to be in the sevens. I almost want to put it in the sixes at this point, but they didn't go up this year. If they went up to 110, I would have put it in the sixes. Let's go like low seven, 7.43 when it comes to price on this. Again, just because I really don't like it at $100. But listen, while I had these scores up, let's send it over to a very quick bourbon bomb of the week and learn about why this is called the pinky batch. You're not going to believe this one. Cheers, y'all. So as you may or may not know, the seventh generation master distiller currently at Jim Beam who worked on this batch, his name is Fred No. He had a grandfather, Frederick Booker No, who is actually nicknamed Pinky. And do you know why he got that nickname? No, neither do I. And neither does the family, which is what they say right on their notes pads here. They basically say they do not know how he got that name, but that's what family and friends used to call him. And that bothers me. It kind of makes me want to go back. Have you ever seen Hitch where basically he takes the chick to the island, right? And he had the book flipped to the page where it was the chick's great, great, great grandfather. And he ended up being like a murderer or something. But I want to go back. I want to figure out why this guy's name was Pinky, but I'm never going to do it. If the family couldn't figure it out, I'm not going to be able to figure it out. So that's who they named it after. Frederick Booker, Pinky, no. And this guy wasn't even in the whiskey world, right? He was actually the vice president of a local bank. Him and his son, which was Booker, no, actually got along doing a lot of other things outside of the whiskey world, obviously, since Frederick Pinky No wasn't really into it. They loved to golf, watch football together, and they say that they would probably have shared a drink of this over a football game. And listen, Hertz is out this week, but I don't want to hear anything about it after we beat Dallas with some Minshew magic and clinch first place in the NFC. Listen, this bottle came in at an 8.58, not a bad spot for it at all. I believe it fell below the Granny's batch, but above the Bardstown batch. Absolutely still a fantastic pour. I'm glad I got my hands on it. Definitely glad I don't buy all four a year, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. Listen, if you've made it this far in this video, make sure you click that like and that subscribe button. We would greatly appreciate it. We were trying to get to 5,000 by the end of the year, but it's definitely going to be pushing it. Make sure you check me out on Instagram at Bourbon of the Week. Go click that follow button over there. Check out our Patreon page, that link in the description below. Come chat with us 24-7 on Discord. As always, please don't drink and drive. Always drink responsibly. Stay healthy, stay happy, stay drinking. Cheers, y'all.